Hello, my name's Chris Oakley and uh, you're watching the very first Football Attic video blog. Now then, if you are familiar with the Football Attic blog site, you'll know that uh, what we tend to do is upload articles from time to time, written articles all about all manner of different aspects of uh, football nostalgia. But we thought we'd do something a little bit different and that is to do the occasional video blog. And to that end, uh, I am here today to talk about one particular aspect of nostalgia that uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you will be familiar with. Some of you may have forgotten all about. Um, some of you may not know anything about this at all. It is an object um, of some desire, you might say, for some people. And it is this. This is a, a, a folder, a, a part work, and it's called World Cup 90, as you can see. Um, let me just uh, hold it there. There we go. You can see that? There we are. Uh, and it's made by Orbis. Now then... Um, some of you, as I say, will be familiar with this. It, uh, of course, came out uh, in the lead-up to the 1990 World Cup. Uh, what was it? Well, as you can see, it's a big folder, quite a thick folder there, lots of pages in there. And um, the deal is that you would, in week one, as with all part works, you'd go into your uh, newsagent and uh, get the first sort of magazine, uh, the first instalment of many, in this case, 20 different uh, parts to it. Uh, and I'm not sure what the deal was in the first week, whether you had to pay for the for the folder, for the binder, or whether you got that free. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but um, then in successive weeks, you would then go to your newsagent and pay another, I don't know how much it was actually, probably in here somewhere, I'll have a look in a minute. It's probably about £1.90 or something uh, per part. And uh, build up this uh, uh, set of instalments into a wonderful collection that you can treasure forever. Um, now then, um, I have to say, I actually... Uh, collected this back in the day and it's something of an oddity for me really because um, uh, I'd kind of finished uh, collecting football stickers uh, in about 1987 at the age of about 15 or 16 so when this came out I was going on 19 and you know it started work and I was considering myself very much an adult albeit a young one uh, you know I had, I had a job and all the rest of it and so the, the whole idea of doing things like collecting stickers seemed a little bit childish actually so Looking back, I'm actually surprised that I went to the trouble of collecting this every week. And I think I did actually collect every single part and complete the, the collection. I say I think, because this isn't my old one, I'm sorry to say. Uh, like so many bits of um, ephemera that you kind of collect along the, you know, down the years. Sticker books, bits of Subutio and heaven knows what else. Um, it got thrown out. Uh, it might be that my mum threw it out, but I won't blame her. Um, it might have been me actually because let's face it we all live in small houses um, well fairly small houses um, and there's only so much room that you can store things in so uh, at some point you have to have a bit of a clear out and well all I can say is that mine has been lost to the ages but um, I managed to pick up this one on eBay not so long ago and I'm really glad I did it's um, it's something that I forgot even existed um, because I think probably from like a year or two afterwards um, I, I just forgot all about this until about, uh, I don't know, three or four months ago as we speak and recording this in um, March 2012. Um, one of those occasions where you, you're surfing the web and you'll just suddenly be distracted by some link or some bit of tech somewhere and you follow a link and then another link and another link and then you end up discovering something that's an absolute gem and, and that was the case with this. I, just, I was searching for something or another, I think on eBay, and then just kind of saw a link somewhere and it led off. To this and I just I went off on a complete reverie because I'd forgotten all about this it really is a wonderful collection and you can still get them by the way on eBay if you wanted to get your own they're not that expensive and you're probably looking at I don't know 20 quid or something at most if you know if that's not too expensive for you um, but the deal was as I say you would um, collect all the installments what was quite clever about this is that you also had a sticker collecting element to it so therefore it kind of prolonged the interest and um, for those people that were interested in that kind of thing, collecting stickers and so on, it was ideal. I must admit, I don't remember seeing in newsagents uh, boxes of Orbis World Cup 90 stickers uh, for sale, but I suppose they must have been because I collected them. And as I say, I think I got the whole lot, but who knows. Anyway, this is a, a complete set. So let's have a look inside and, and see if we can remind ourselves of some of the things that were in here. Um, I've just kind of filed them in their correct section. This, this is um, his part one. You might be able to see that. Um, I'm sorry if I'm not holding this correctly. It's all back to front on my screen. There we go. 
Um, so you've got, your, you've got um, part one there, uh, Rude Hullet, Gary Stevens, um, and these are all the other kind of covers as well. Uh, let's get that out of the way. So there we go, we move on. And basically what the deal was that you had all these different sections. Now then, uh, each section dealt with a different sort of topic. There's part 20. I wonder if it's got the price on there. Oh, there we go. I can tell you, it's £1.25. That's cheaper half the price. Mind you, 20 times £1.25. Mm, what's that? £24, is it? Mental arithmetic's not my strong point. Anyway, so different sections as there were. Team pages was the sort of black edging. So you, basically, you, in each magazine that you'd get, uh, you'd have the little sort of coloured tab at the end uh, so you knew which section the pages had to go in. So the first section was team pages and this was basically where you'd have a, like a little potted history um, of each team and um, as you can see um, results from previous World Cups, um, sort of honours and, and various details the year that a particular uh, football association was formed um, and then you've got the kits down here you might be able to just make that out a little sort of illustration of what the, the team kit looked like. Uh, if we turn the page then we get into the sort of uh, sticker collecting element of it and um, what's quite interesting if you can still hear me is that um, compared to say Panini sticker collections uh, what you had was a situation whereby w w with Panini I think they kind of sent a photographer along to a particular club and would spend the day there or the afternoon there f uh, taking photographs of all the team members what they did with this collection is essentially they just raided the uh, the image uh, gallery um, and just plundered photographs from whichever source they could find and um, so that's why you've got in many cases uh, players wearing different kits some of them are just headshots some of them are kind of you know full-length shots action shots so a kind of hodgepodge but in some ways that kind of adds to the charm really let's just spin on a little bit you got your Italy there apologies if I'm not holding this very well it's quite heavy if I, if I make uh, that uh, particular honest uh, admission um, Brazil um, and so it goes on but really good I mean the, the fact that you had stickers in there as well it's um, it was quite good um, and like I say it's probably odd in some ways that I was still technically collecting stickers at the age of about um, 18 going on 19 but yeah, I think it was probably the last collection uh, of stickers that I had until much 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 later um, when I decided to have a go at collecting Panini Euro 2000 I think and that was very much done as a kind of it was very much a sense of me uh, revisiting my youth and getting back into the whole nostalgia thing. But that's another story. We're talking about this. So these are the team pages. Just going on here. South Korea, you might be able to make out. Is that South Korea? Oh, Czechoslovakia. Apologies. Um, and then you've got the blue section, which was called uh, Superstars. And here is where you had player profiles. So uh, in this case, you've got Maradona, of course. Um, Italy's great hope, Gianluca Vialli, complete with hair, no less. Um, the Vulture, Emilio Butragrano, and so on and so forth. So you had some fantastic um, profiles. Um, and then I think at the back of the blue section, which we're in, you then also had, excuse me, um, a photo gallery, if I remember rightly, or maybe that's in one of the, oh, there we go. So then you had this kind of Hall of Fame section um, where you had like full page uh, glossy colour photos of the stars of the World Cup down the years. In this case, the aforementioned uh, Viali once again and uh, the great Gerd Muller in this case. And um, there are quite a few of these pictures uh, to collect. There's Platini and another aforementioned in the form of uh, Butragueno and so on. So that was good. Then you get the green section. And this was all about great games, which uh, in itself was pretty good. It kind of gave it a, a, an encyclopedic uh, quality to it, this, in that you, you had all these descriptions of what a particular well-known game was like. For instance, in this case, Brazil against uh, France in 1986. Lots of the finals were discussed, um, like this one, for instance, Argentina against Holland, 78. And um, so it goes on. So another very interesting bit. Lots to read there of, of great interest. Then there's the yellow section, which is golden goals. So I suppose that's then kind of breaking things down into even smaller chunks. So you didn't just have a description of games, but just specific great goals. In this case, your man Archie Gemmel there. 
uh, a worthy inclusion. What else? Oh, Gerd Muller once again. Um, bom, bom, bom. Let's just spin through. Apologies for the rush nature of this, and I'm sure you probably can't see very much a lot of the time. Um, one, two, one, nil. That was Roberto Bettiger against Argentina, 78. Michael Laudrup, you get the picture. So that's your that's your yellow section. And then um, here we've got um, the sort of second part of the yellow section, which is all about. Um, it's called Cup Cup. Cu better get this right. Cup Countdown. Um, so you had sort of focus on specific elements of the upcoming World Cup that year, 1990. So focus on Italy, uh, Argentina, Ireland, various other things. But th but this this particular section, Cup Count. I can't even say it. Get the teeth in. Cup Countdown was split into two, and the back of this wasn't just all about the various teams in the upcoming World Cup, but also about more sort of generic aspects of the World Cup and its history. So for instance, here you have a, a section on World Cup posters, which is very good. Just a sort of thing that um, I know kids like to read because they like to find out about the history of things and, and the, the whole graphical element of the posters themselves. There you are, you can see some more on the back there. Um, a focus on some of the stadiums in the 1990 World Cup, the Giuseppe Miazza in this case. Uh, the draw, which um, had yet to be made, of course, at the time that this was printed. Um, and also three different um, instalments which looked at the TV coverage for the 1990 World Cup that was coming up. So you had um, a, a lot of mentions of uh, Martin Tyler, who, of course, at the time would have been working for ITV, I think. Oh, it could be wrong on that. Uh, I stand corrected if that's the case. Um, and about the official. So that was quite a nice section as well, kind of just... You know, looking a bit further afield, not just looking at the, the the history and everything, but also how preparations were going for the 1990 World Cup. And then finally, at the back of the red section, you had Finals Fever, and this was basically a look at each World Cup in turn, starting off with Uruguay 1930, more history, Switzerland 54, and so on and so on. It goes on, um, working all the way through to the very end, Mexico 86. It's always the thing I find quite alarming, actually, when you look back at old history books like this, is that at which point sort of history stops as you know it now. And then the fact that when this book was made, the, the most recent World Cup was 86, and you just think so much has happened since then, makes you feel quite old. Anyway, there we are. So um, that, in essence, is World Cup 90 by Orbis Publishing. Uh, really good, actually. Um, something that's well worth looking out for, especially if... Uh, your memories of the 1990 World Cup were very good, as indeed certainly mine were. Uh, very exciting tournament. Um, so there we go. That's the, the first video blog for the Football Attic. If there's anything you'd like me to talk about, or if you have a particular uh, piece of collectability, uh, if that's the right word I'm looking for, a, a particularly collectible item uh, regarding football nostalgia that you'd like me to discuss, let us know. Get in touch. Uh, our email address is admin at the football attic. Dot com. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Football Attic um, or indeed just go to the website www.thefootballattic.com. There it is. Uh, thank you very much indeed for watching. Hope to bring you another video blog sometime soon. Until next time, goodbye.